So as you come into this moment, Gemini, you've got two planets still in your sign, Mars and Jupiter, but they're conflicted as you come into this month. And therefore, something that you're really wanting as an individual may seem a little bit out of reach. It could be about where you live. It could be about your professional situation. I'm going to unpack this for you. There is a balance that you're going to need to try to find. But also this is a month when we're going to see a new eclipse series, which begins on the 18th, and it's in the sign of Pisces, how you connect to the wider world. Your imagination is going to be a critical feature of that over the next six months. But on the 22nd, we have the autonomous equinox. The sun marches into your sister air sign of Libra, bringing about a 13 week period where you can really shine with the warmth of your personality, but also the radiance of your ideas. There's also some other very exciting information that brings the curtain down on this month. If you're new to my channel, it's lovely to have your company. If you have any thoughts, please feel welcome to share them. This is very much a community. If you're a returning visitor, as always, I truly appreciate your support. If you've yet to subscribe to the channel, please help it thrive. Click that sub button and also the bell notification symbol. I'm a consulting astrologer. If you'd like to have a one-to-one -one with me, please check out my testimonials below. You can see how other people have found working with me. And finally, my year 2025 personal horoscope forecast special offer is now launched. You can get the rest of this year free if you order your 25 now, plus 30% off and your life roadmap report. These charts are totally unique to you. They're fantastic value. Such a lot of information. Please see the link below for more. So on the screen now, Gemini, I'm sharing the event chart at the start of the month. Of course, we can be mindful of the luminary. So the sun for you is in house four, how things feel, your immediate environment, very much to do with security, shelter and nurture. But the moon is actually in the very quick move in third house and links very positively to Jupiter in your sign. So there may be a sense as you come into this month that something is cooking and it's cooking good. And part of the reason for that, I feel, is that Venus, the planet of relating, is in a delicious location for you. And it could be making you feel utterly gorgeous. It's also linking very dynamically to Pluto. Pluto in your ninth house has since the 21st of January been really pushing you to expand your horizons, be a bit more daring, learn new topics, perhaps even some formal subjects. And this link with Pluto suggests if you are traveling anywhere at the start of this month, you could be captivated, not just by the place that you visit and totally immerse yourself in it, but by a particular person. But if you are trying to find a balance between your home, professional uh, lives, this month can prove to be a little bit challenging to begin with, to be honest. Because right at the start of the month, although Jupiter and Mars in your sign are very strong and Jupiter makes that great link to the moon and Mars is forging a pretty fine link to Mercury, actually Mars is conflicted by Neptune and also in a strange way by Venus. So there's a T-square. Mars is about what you want as an individual. It's going to move out of your sign on the 4th into Cancer, but it starts this month in a very enervating and confusing link with Neptune, but also in a link with Venus, which could see you go for something quickly, which isn't necessarily the right thing for you. Also, Saturn in your 10th house of responsibilities. So just someone you encounter professionally may be very enshrined in a very traditional way of doing things. They may have a very process orientated approach, which you could find is a real killer for your passion and flair. So if you are someone who's more of a natural bohemian or a much more of an individualistic person, you could find the very start of this month to be pretty frustrating. And with Pluto inversing back into Capricorn, also on the first, 
after it links with Venus so beautifully. That's also suggesting through to the 19th of November that how you earn money, how you value things, how you're connected very deeply to other people could go through a final reanalysis. It's not going to happen in our lifetime again. It won't go through Capricorn in our lifetime again. But you could find yourself diving deep psychologically through to the third week of November. But also, as we go into this new month, we then have a new moon on the third. This new moon in Virgo is very much about appreciating the virtues of the sign of virtue, Virgo. So where you live, the more it's working in a functional way, the better it is. But if you're working a lot of hours, juggling different roles, perhaps even different jobs, looking after the needs of others, it can all start to feel very oppressive, particularly from the uh, 5th through to the 10th, because then after the new moon occurs, the sun goes face to face with Saturn. And we all know that we have all this technology, we have all these aids to help us, and everyone seems to be even more exhausted and stressed out trying to keep up. And if that seems to call out to you, just be aware that Mars moves on the 4th into Cancer. He doesn't particularly like being in Cancer. He can be a bit niggly and defensive here, to be honest. But what he's saying to you is whatever you are doing, professionally or at home, it needs to have some kind of benefit in a practical way, perhaps financially, but also in terms of keeping things stable in your life. So Mars is giving you thrust around perhaps making more money for the following eight weeks, and that in itself is an unusual transit. Mars is usually six. It's because of an upcoming uh, Mars retrograde in Leo, which uh, follows after this one, uh, after the eight week period. But what we're going to get here for you is a chance to evaluate how you're trying to find that balance between home and work. And Mars, therefore, in a way, can be an agent of good, I, I feel. But what Jupiter has been doing, perhaps, if you've been watching certain astrologers, is that it has made you eternally optimistic about how things can turn out. But Jupiter, of course, is in its detriment in your sign. And that's because your sign benefits from quick communication. Jupiter's really about the big picture for its rulership of Sagittarius philosophy, the higher truth, and through its rulership of Pisces, very much about faith. So in your sign, it can be a bit impatient, and it's clamped by Saturn at the start of this month. And then as the sun moves forwards, the sun then goes into a square with Jupiter. So the more you kind of think, look, this has got to work out for me because Jupiter's in my sign, the more disappointed you could be. So Keeping a healthy dose of realism actually can really be to your advantage. And we're going to get an opportunity to find that extra realism because on the 9th, Mercury switches back into Virgo. It also emerges from its post-retrograde shadow on the 11th. But we have a lunar eclipse on the 18th, as I mentioned in my introduction, that is the first of a new series, provides a backdrop for the next six months, but it is very close to Neptune. So in week three, we have two uh, overlapping influences. One potentially very strong. That's a great link between Uranus and also the Sun, asking you perhaps to dig deep, to quarry out some inner resources and look at some emotional issues, perhaps in a fresh way. Perhaps talk to people who have a completely different a perspective to you because that can provide in itself a lot of fresh uh, a fresh understanding but the opposition with Neptune means that if you are a bit dispirited with your professional situation and you're having to work very very hard to protect what you have emotionally or physically in terms of your property or your home it can feel somewhat exhausting but the key here really to be honest is you asking the question are you, in terms of your professional interactions, in an environment that truly works for you? If you're clinging on to a job for the money, but you hate it, or if you're in a job that's wonderfully uh, perfect for you creatively, but doesn't pay any money, 
both actually are not quite working for you and you may need to rethink. And what's going to help you to rethink is the autonomous equinox. The sun's crashing arrival in Libra, your sister air sign, of the 22nd. It's linked with Pluto, even though Pluto is in Capricorn now. It's a disassociate link. It's terrific. And that can in itself be a big impetus to really find the inner voice, the inner... Uh, uh, the inner energy and verve and vibe to shake something up that really is right for changing. And when we have uh, Venus moving into your sixth house on the, the 23rd, it's possible you could nab yourself a new job. Then on the 26th, Mercury joins up the sun in your fifth house. So it's all getting very sparkly at the end of this month. The 30th we have a Kazemi, but it's a positive one in the sense it's a superior conjunction because the Sun and Mercury merge, the Sun amplifies and radiates into Mercury, but in Libra that gives you a fantastic opportunity to turn up the brightness on any talent, flair, creativity, artistry, or just allure that you have. So as much as this month for the first two months may be very much about trying to find some kind of way through that works for you as an individual, two competing energies, by the last 10 days, the chance for you to really showcase and dazzle people with all the best about you is absolutely awesome. Seize it with both hands. It's been a pleasure being with you, Gemini. Have a great September and goodbye.